uh, when they called me, and, and it was interesting, my, uh, I had taught, they signed me to a junior high school, which was fine, but I had a, a first time experience of teaching junior high school when the only teaching experience I'd had before that was when I taught university students while I was working on my master's. So that was a transition for me and I did not have a planning period that first year. Mm -hmm. So uh, that was extra with a one year old at home. Mm -hmm. But uh, they sent me to a school where there was only one minority family in the district. Mm -hmm. So and in the, was that? Uh, that was at Kappa Junior High. Okay. And um, the student body then only had the three children from that family. Mm -hmm. And uh, I had gone to all segregated schools through college and a, a historically black college university. When I got my master's, I went to Fisk University in Nashville. And so that was my first experience of having been exposed to a classroom that was a different ethnic group from mine. Mm -hmm. How much did you know about the 501 district and I'm going to ask that question first, then another one. Before, I only, when you applied. I only knew that it was the, the only public school district in the city of Topeka. Mm -hmm. I knew that their schools were separated, elementary, junior high, and high school. And, I, and of course, that they were integrated. I did not know until after I had been in Topeka, oh, I imagine eight to 10 years, I did not find out until then the work that the NAACP had been doing to get the school board to hire some minority teachers. Mm -hmm. And I, I found that information out accidentally when I was having a conversation with somebody and they mentioned that they had seen my transcript was not a, a school person and they knew my background and I inquired as to how well they had been on some kind of committee that had screened done some screening for applicants right. so that's how I found that out I did not know of the involvement of the sit of the members of the church I joined Mm -hmm. Which was? Uh, St. John African Methodist Episcopal Church mm -hmm. until after I had been a member for some, <laughs> for some time. Right. And that was the crux of the uh, several of the officers. Lucinda Todd, for instance, belonged to that church. So I did not know that kind of history. Mm -hmm. when, I, when I went for my interview to be hired, one of the persons who interviewed me was this national teacher that I had been substituting for. And she said to me, she said, I don't know why they put you through all this. They know they're going to hire you. <laughs> <laughs> Which made me relax, you know, when I was being interviewed. So I think that there had been a, a lot of community Mm -hmm. involvement on the part of the African Americans in the NAACP prior to my getting here. Okay, yeah, exactly. And, and of course they, they didn't know anything about me except my credentials. Mm -hmm. And so that worked out. I stayed at the junior high for two years. Mm -hmm. Well, can you, can you give us a little bit about what that first day was like for you? Um, teaching, like as you said, in a with a totally different ethnic group. Well, when I when I did my student teaching, which I did at home in a, in a segregated situation, my uh, teacher, my supervising teacher, had introduced me to the class the first day. 
and then there, thereafter, all during my time, he was out of the room. Mm. So I, I was used to handling a group of students by myself. Right. Um, I, I was not um, bothered by the fact that they were uh, of a different ethnic group because when I did my substituting at the high school, there were more Caucasians than there were African Americans. Mm -hmm. So, you know, and I had, that had been successful. So it, it didn't bother me any more than this is a new experience, you know. Mm -hmm. Regular first beginning jitters, I guess you would say. Yeah. Mm -hmm. um, the, I had a seventh grade homeroom. It was seventh, eighth, ninth grade school. They had at that time, uh, they didn't call them gifted classes. They referred to them in math as SMSG classes, which was a special title for the new math was starting at that time. This was, this was 1958. Okay. And, uh, I was fresh out of the university with a master's degree and they would not give me any of those SMST classes. So right. I, I, I... Did anyone ever say why? No. No? Okay. They just, uh, it, it was just kind of, the classes were already assigned, you know, to the teachers and they had been teaching those classes and so forth. The interesting thing that happened was I was, there were complaints from some of the parents and the teacher and the students, of course, mm -hmm. because I was teaching some information that was not being taught in the SMSG classes. And they couldn't understand, you know, the kids were going home saying this is harder and that kind <laughs> of jazz. And so the principal talked to the supervising teacher who was this national teacher. And, uh, and she called me in. He made arrangements for her to have a conference with me. And she said, what kind of materials are you using? And I said, the books that you recommended. <laughs> <laughs> so she said, which I was, you know. And so she says, okay, I'll take care of it. He had wanted her to meet with me, I think, like once a week. She said, you don't need to come back anymore. <laughs> and that put an end to that. Right. But the successful thing that I think was that the parents finally decided, in fact, several of them told me personally, my ninth grade students especially, they were algebra, beginning algebra and all, and of course they were going to the high school the next year. They said, I'm so glad that somebody is finally making the kids get serious because they need this and they knew that those grades were going to count on their GPS. Yeah. Of course, I had complaints the first time I gave six weeks grades, but you know I held to that, okay. and uh, that that worked out.